There was also enormous benefit to being in Bulgaria because there's so many genuine craftsmen there. So we were able to, you know, build all the weapons and even, you know, the, the construction department. There were so many talented um, men and women in these departments that, you know, and the painters and the scenics um, that it, it really shows, I think, on camera. And to, to be able to have that kind of talent, you know, was really terrific for the film. This movie takes place in terms of real history over 2,000 years ago, but it doesn't feel dated. And there's a, there's a, a connection that we make to characters, even like Artemisia, but also Themistocles, um, that, that resonates today. What do you think that is? What, what gives Artemisia a timeless um, quality as a female character, Themistocles a timeless quality as, as well, I think you look at Themistocles, and he's just a guy who's trying to organize, you know, chaos. You know, he's he's democratic, but he's still the democratic process is lumpy. It's not clean. In a weird way, Xerxes Xerxes' political process is way easier. You know, like he's able to just go like war, and they're like, okay, we're going to war, I guess. You know, where meanwhile, like Themistocles is like clearly we're going to get you know the snot kicked out of us if we don't do something, and people are still like, well, you know. Let's just talk, maybe there's a deal or whatever it is, you know, you just see the sort of the real frustration that, that, that everyone having a voice, though we are advocates of that, you know, we, we, we want the side of democracy to win, you know, you still have to per portray it as not easy, you know, it's because it's not, it's a conversation, right? Um, so the difference between democracy being a conversation and this dictatorship being sort of a single idea, you know, that's that's kind of some of the sort of contemporary ideas that are are that are, are sort of put forth by the film. But I also think that you know a lot of the film is about human struggle and family and revenge and love, and I think that these things are both universal and they're timeless. And I feel like the way they're depicted in this you know, in this visual style with the undertones of Frank Miller and the graphic novel and the first film um, as a springboard, mm -hmm. I think give it this modern quality. Yeah, there's something interesting about the idea that the prism, the graphic novel was written. So here you have history, right? You have this, you have Herodotus. And then Frank Miller reads Herodotus, writes a graphic novel. Now he's taken this history book and turned it into like a graphic novel, which is bizarre anyway. And then I take it and turn it into a movie. And then we make another movie based on that movie, which in which a weird way- Which is based on that graphic novel, which, which is based well, on yeah, history. Yeah, which is a cool like, then it's, suddenly it is contemporary, right? It's now it exists almost outside of the time that it depicts because it's, it could be on another planet, you know, like it's literally like it becomes, you know, universal in that way. 